يلا يلا باذن الله سبحانه وتعالى لن يعبد في ارض الشام سوى الله ولن يقم الا حكم الله ولن يعبد جبت والطاغوت في ارض الشام بعد هذه الايام باذن الله سبحانه وتعالى لا نرضى بغير الله ودين الله وسنه نبي محمد بن عبد الله I apologize for the quality of that video, uh, but we wanted to, to show it. Look, that's just a statue, for goodness sake. That's just a statue. They are cutting the heads off of children who are screaming as it's done to them. They are murdering countless people, putting people in chains, raping women. The Wahhabi movement is, is fanatical and it's part of Islamic extremism. Uh, there are many aspects to it. We need to know what it is because Justin Trudeau went to a mosque that preaches Wahhabism. Robert Spencer is an expert on all branches of, of Islam. Robert, I think a lot of people have heard the word Wahhabi. They're not really sure what it is. And they, they, they'd be stunned there could be a Wahhabi mosque in a civilized city like Montreal. What are we talking about here? There are probably plenty of them, uh, Michael. But I'm sure that Asun al Nabawi, a mosque where uh, Justin Trudeau went, uh, well, it's obviously notorious because of the report that al-Qaeda was recruiting there and so on. In any case, Wahhabism is the uh, official religion of Saudi Arabia. Of course, the official religion of Saudi Arabia is Islam, but uh, Saudi Arabia is in particular a Wahhabi state. Muhammad ibn, Ab Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab lived uh, in the 18th century. He died in 1792, and he styled himself an Islamic reformer. A lot of people call for reform in Islam, and you should be careful what you wish for. You might get it. Yeah. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab was a reformer who intended to strip away everything that had been added later in Islam and go back to the basics, to the original, to what the Quran taught and what Muhammad did, and ended up with this virulent and violent form of Islam that uh, the Saudis have spent billions to propagate around the world. And uh, they financed 80% of the mosques in the United States. That means that 80% of the mosques in the United States as separate studies have shown, teach the Wahhabi understanding of Islam. And it's the same thing in Canada. It is an extraordinarily uh, draconian form of the religion that uh, exalts violence and uh, teaches the systematic oppression of women and non-Muslims that is part of traditional Islamic law. Mm. So even if this mosque was no longer a center for recruitment, that, that, that's, I mean, I think that we can question that, but let's say that it, it is, that's proven. They're preaching on a regular basis. Would it, would it be consistent with the secular, liberal values of a country like Canada? No, hardly. Absolutely not. And see, that's the thing. I've been uh, seeing people saying, well, Justin Trudeau, you know, he went there before the U.S. report came out. And so he didn't know that this mosque wasn't completely on the up and up. All he had to do was look at the kind of things they're teaching in the school there, look at the kinds of things that they probably offer to Muslims who go there to worship, and see that what is being taught is exactly the kind of perspective that is inimical to the values of the Canadian state as it's currently constituted, inimical to Western notions of human rights, and ultimately the kind of perspective that breeds jihad terrorists. Mm. Now, we don't know exactly what was said, but... If he had gone there and said to the, the, the assembled crowd, and it's a large mosque, it can contain as many as 3,000 people, we don't know how many were there, but if he'd said, I'm here to say to you that you're welcome in this country, but we have some, some fundamental tenets of our, of our belief system, the equality between the genders, the right for gay people to be openly gay, uh, the right for Jewish people to be uh, respected and, and be proud of their faith, uh, you have to be allowed to change your religion if you want and leave Islam. If he'd said, if he'd said these things, how would they have reacted? Uh, I think they would have reacted very negatively. Uh, they would have been very angry with him, and they would have said that what he's saying is Islamophobic, and he wasn't welcome to say it in the mosque. Uh, of course, we know that uh, Justin Trudeau, being a good multiculturalist, would never have dreamed of challenging them. After all, he took issue with the Canadian government report that uh, classified some Islamic practices as barbaric. Uh, so we know he did not say any of those things that he should have said, and that if he had, uh, he certainly would not have been welcome. You know, obviously you're, you're in the States, you're not following this firsthand, but it's quite incredible that th there are many mosques that are conservative he could have gone to. He chose this particular place. <sighs> He's not the brightest man in the world. I'm not trying to be rude, but it may well be he wasn't aware of, of its ideas. But he is now. He should apologize. We're still waiting. As always, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Michael.